Okay. All right. So I'm going to somehow magically position this camera in in my office. I don't know if we can do this. Uh, it's going to be fairly close, but it, it won't matter for what I want to show. I'm going to steal my son here. If I can navigate to this closet side of the office. All right. So like I said, we, we're fairly close, but it, it won't matter too much. So you've seen a lot of things where you're crashing in and shielding and stuff. A lot of times that's either an attack directly, right? If I steal my son in here, a lot of times that's going to be attacked directly, or it's going to be, hey, I'm covering, and I might do something else. Well, I like to do it sometimes as both. So if I, we're cramped in here, so don't worry about the positioning. But uh, say if I've done an attack, right, and for whatever reason, he's going to, to uh, I have his hand here, he's gonna, I'm going to block him. He, he blocks it, right? So I'm kind of jammed in there, right? So one of the things I like to do is to then use the shielding as the attack from this. As soon as I feel something, I can attack, so I'm not going to do that. But what I can do is another option is I feel something, and I just go with it and collapse. So immediately, as soon as that gets here and he gives me some resistance, I let him commit to that, and I go through and around it and attack. And as soon as I do that, he collapses a little bit, and I just hook and strike or whatever I'm going to do. So your block becomes your catch, if you will. As soon as he, as soon as he's blocked you, you go, okay, he's committed to that, but I don't need to be beholden to that. I can even collapse low, so I can come in here and collapse low, if you can see that elbow strike, and then you know do whatever I'm going to do. The point is, sometimes you want to think outside the box. I like to give people an opportunity um, that they think they have because they think they've saved themselves. And it's a great kind of a fake out. As soon as as soon as they've committed to do something, as long as you don't change on them in a way they can feel easily, you've got some time. It's the same thing as stunning them. Okay, same thing. Um, for example, it can also be the case where you're blocking something, right? But maybe they're putting some resistance. So if he does a high a strike or some sort, and, and I pardon, he doesn't know exactly what we're doing, <laughs> so that's fine. So say he's got a high strike here, whether it's just a hand, a knife stick, whatever, and I end up blocking it, um, I can put the pressure on that and then lean into it and attack even while it's in contact. The point is I'm just trying to get you to think outside the box as, as far as what your elbows are doing and, and, and kind of get some simultaneous actions going. So like somebody else said, hey, I've got strikes that happen to be striking the arm and the hand at the same time. Great idea. Or, again, you're blocked. Okay, let them feel like you're blocked and collapse right in. Okay, so you're going to move your body, even though they're 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 blocking you at your forearm. Boom, and you just collapse. There's a lot of options for that too. Is once this is here, there's a, a lot of stored energy there. So there's some neat things to play with that. Um, along those same lines, I'm going to actually bring in something from uh, from more arts that have say a forearm block. I don't like it considered as a forearm block, but again, it's using the elbow in an odd way. So if I do a forearm block, I'm leading with that elbow and expanding with that forearm. So if I'm doing it to him, I'm going to be going pop, strike there at the same time as I strike across the collarbone and to the side of his neck. So I'm actually hitting three things all at once. So it's here, bam, boom, okay? So I've got the, the solar plexus, i got the collarbone, and i got the side of the head. And once again, if he blocks any of that, boom, I still can collapse. Or if he's really going to block it, <laughs> I can come up the middle with the other arm. It doesn't really matter. Point is, is, is I want you to think about you know using your body and then adapting to whatever somebody gives you. Just like a lot of times we say in some of the grappling arts or in the Dumog, as soon as they grabbed you, you got them because you know exactly where they are. Once they've grabbed you, they've told you exactly how they're moving because you can feel them. Uh, and then you just go go from there and have fun with it. So just uh, just uh, wanted to keep the ball rolling. The, Dr. Tim showed some things also where you're crashing in and you're blocking boom and hitting, all of those good things. Um, you can do that even with this collapsed elbow, like I was saying, as I let someone else in here. That's why I didn't do the whole session. <laughs> um, anyway, just some ideas there. And to me, that's in connection for Mantis as well, because I like to use my elbows a lot and I like to stick. Um, even if I do collapse in, I like to, once they recoil, whatever, I like to then hit and then wrap around the head. And then I can strike with the shoulder, I mean, with the elbow again. 
fun stuff. So anyway, if that if that resonated with you, cool. If it doesn't, that's okay too. I didn't waste a lot of your time. But happy to discuss or answer any questions or show something else in the limited space that I have. <laughs> yes, everyone giggles when I hit them like that. I don't know why. Ooh, I have to, well, not that you care to see me, but I could adjust my camera. I, I miss being out there and sharing. It's just uh, running this thing is, uh, actually took a lot more effort than I thought, but I think it's done really good. We've, we've got a lot of the word out there. People have got some good training in. We Gosh, we've had as many as 65 people on, and it's been a solid 50 or more people for the whole zillion hours. What are we, in the seventh hour now? It's crazy. Um, this is wonderful. I don't even know that many people, so thanks for everyone for sharing it and uh, passing the word. I appreciate appreciate that. I will say one thing. Um, I am trying to, to share on my own in this uh, COVID world, so go ahead and please you know, find my YouTube channel. There's only one Thai botting out there, T-Y-E botting. Um, I try to share something every week or two. Uh, the next two things are probably going to be on some grip work for our niece as well as playing with Redonda and uh, discussing how Redonda Sunawali is related to a lot of other things uh, and also show you a little training device I have on my porch. So that's going to be a short session. But anyway, join me on YouTube. I'm happy to have you. Um, and then follow if you're interested in the, on the more of the Kung Fu, Kung Fu side of things, there's a Thai's Kung Fu group. You're welcome to, to join that if you don't mind some of our weird ways we move leaking in. Um, I'm always looking for connections of things and uh, opportunistic strikes and things. So that's me. I like that. I like power generation. Those of you who know me know that's a big thing with me because I can't stand trying to hit hard. I just want to naturally hit hard through structure and uh, good body technique and alignment because that's a lot more easy. I don't like, I'm a lazy guy, right? So anyway, um, if there's no questions, that's fine. Uh, appreciate it. And again, appreciate everybody coming in and it's amazing how many uh, people have been on for almost this whole section, or if not this whole session. It's, it's really, really uh, shows what kind of community we have, what kind of commitment to arts we have, and, and that also we, we're going stir crazy. <laughs> so I appreciate that. 